point out um, what structures are seen at this point. First of all, notice that this is the first rib. Okay, uh, most of the ribs are removed, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's gone. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Okay, uh, very similar situation in the horse. Eighteen ribs. Thorax is much longer. Addition, additional five ribs in thoracic cavity so it looks longer than the other areas. Uh, here is the last rib and here is a dual coxy. So very little portion here is actually your paralumbar fossa. Okay, so much less space available as compared to the ruminants. Okay, okay guys. So let's look at those things. So what about this muscle here and this muscle here? These are muscles inserting on the first rib. So these muscles eventually are going to pull the ribs linearly and also pull them laterally causing expansion of the thoracic cage. So these are the muscles of inspiration. Those are the scalenous muscle or scalenous muscle. Okay. Uh, they usually split C -L -A, uh, S C L A N E U S so scalenous muscle. Okay. Uh, this one is scalenous ventralis and this one is scalenous medius. You remember any other scalenous muscle in the ruminants as well as in the dog. Okay, we have one more muscle in the in the ruminants, specifically in the goat. It is absent in the sheep. Scalenous dorsalis, okay, which is more superficial, goes to the fourth rib. That muscle is absent in the horse. And usually, what we see between scalenous ventralis and scalenous medius, you have the brachial plexus emerging outside, going to the fourth rib. So all that are the ventral branches or as they have come together, that is the root of the brachial plexus. Okay. Uh, just cranial to the first rib, you have uh, axillary vein, the big opening here, as well as the axillary artery, which is the blood vessel with red latex. Okay. So those blood vessels would, they go around the first rib and they come to the forelimb. But at the same place, we see a nerve is going inside the thoracic cavity. So like if I move this nerve, it moves the lungs, means it is coming into the thoracic cavity, and that is your phrenic nerve, usually formed by ventral bandages of the fifth and sixth cervical spinal nerves. But sixth one is more common, fifth one sometimes may not or may contribute. But that's the phrenic nerve. Okay. So the phrenic nerve runs along the scalenous muscle, and then goes inside the thoracic cavity and supply the diaphragm on that side. Okay. Uh, what muscle system would be present here? The one that we could not see in the other dissection. Okay. That's your iliocostalis. After removing the serratus dorsalis cranialis, serratus dorsalis caudalis, we expose the iliocostalis muscles. And in order to take the or expose the thoracic cavity, we have to cut through them also. Okay. So the superficial most, these are the tendons of the leucostylus. And usually those will be present along this line. Okay. Uh, observe the lung and see what difference you notice between lung of the ruminant and lung of the horse. It's not lobated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would we why say that it is not lobated? Why do we see that in, in the ruminants, in the dog, it is clearly lobated because both of them they have oblique fissures, but we don't see any oblique fissure in this lung. The cranial part and caudal parts are separated from each other only by means of cardiac notch. Okay, but we still, if you say cranial lobe and caudal lobe, we still accept that one, but usually it is not lobated. Okay, so cranial lobe and caudal lobe are only separated by the cardiac notch. And as we are looking into the right, right lung, we also have one more lobe on the medial aspect that is the accessory lobe of the right lung. That's the what? Accessory lobe of the right lung. Okay. okay. So that's the accessory lobe right here which is as usual situated into the mediastinal recess. So what structure is this? Caudal vena cava. What about this structure? The same thing that we saw here. Okay. The right phrenic nerve. But usually it should go along the caudal vena cava. 
this looks like individual variation in this particular animal where the nerve has come off the caudal vena cava but it should really go into the caudal vena cava okay and then here we see the mediastinal recess where the accessory lobe of the right lung is present okay before we move to the left side uh, we just want to go over a few things here uh, what kind of pleura is present here and what kind of pleura is present here as well as what kind of pleura is present here this one is costal pleura which is also parietal pleura this one is diaphragmatic pleura which is also parietal pleura this one is visceral or pulmonary pleura what about this that is mediastinal pleura which is also parietal pleura okay so when this diaphragmatic parietal pleura it reaches to the place where it cannot go further it reflects and becomes costal pleura so here the pleura is reflecting and the pleura is reflecting along a line right here and that is your line of pleura reflection okay so where we see line of pleura reflection this is the basal border of the lung okay right from here all the way to here that is the basal border of the lung but lungs would not be as small as we see here those would be larger at least uh, twice of this size we say okay and those would be extending up to this line and that actually would be the basal border of the lung the space between basal border and the costal diaphragmatic recess uh, so uh, uh, you can say line of reflection is your costal diaphragmatic recess okay in the costal diaphragmatic recess you never find lung tissue so auscultating on that area would not be of any use so what we're going to do? We're going to limit ourselves to the region where the lungs could be auscultated efficiently, and that would be cranially. The boundary would be tricipital line. Dorsally, the boundary would be iliocostalis muscle, and caudally, the boundary would be basal border of the lung. Okay. So these are a few things that we saw in the thoracic cavity. Uh, we still have to look at a few other things like <coughs> nerves and veins and other blood vessels and everything. We'll see that tomorrow. Uh, but right now we can just look at the mediastinum here, the cranial mediastinum, that's the right azygous vein, then middle mediastinum along this line, and this is the caudal mediastinum. Uh, how about caudal mediastinum of the horse? Is it well formed or not? No. Okay, it is not well formed, it has fenestrations, and that's why the right and left thoracic cavities are always connected to each other. So any stabbing on the right thoracic cavity cause collapse of the lungs on both sides. It could be either thoracic cavity when you have any incision going through and through, forming any perforation into the thoracic cavity that's going to cause collapse of both lungs at the same time because of connection between thoracic cavity. Okay, okay so on 